Hey folks, uh, this is Mr. Math Blog here, and this uh, lesson is on problem solving. So let's go ahead and get started. This is section uh, six five in the book that I'm following. So uh, your Common Core strand is here. So here we're going to um, uh, use a strategy of making a table to solve some problems to use uh, to get equivalent fractions. Okay. So let's uh, recall, uh, what, what models could you use uh, to find a common denominator of two-fourths and one-third? All right, well, what we, could what we could do is in our last lesson is we can fold two pieces of paper, the same size, of course, uh, and fold one piece into quarter-size pieces, because this is two-fourths, so into quarter-size pieces, and fold the other piece into a third-size pieces. And then we can try to fold uh, each piece into equal-size pieces. So I have an example right here. So. So here's a piece of paper that I folded into four equal sections this way. And then here's another one that I folded into three equal sections this way. And then if I, if I put these folds together, it gets me this right here. And then so that's going to make 12 equal pieces right there. Okay? So uh, the common denominator would then be 12. So, so would your common denominator of two-fourths and one-third be greater or less than four or three? Okay, well, I just showed you it's going to be greater because it's going to be 12. The common denominator is going to be 12 right there. Okay, so if I did four folds and three folds, it would get me 12 folds together with equal sections right there. Okay, all right, and they have to be equal sections. Okay, so here we go. Jama is planting a vegetable garden. The garden will have no more than 12 sections. Three-fourths of the garden will have carrots. What other fractions could represent the part of the garden that will have carrots? Okay, so we're looking for equivalent fractions here equal to three-fourths right here. Okay, so what do I need to find? Okay, so what I need to find is uh, other fractions that could represent the part of the garden that have carrots. Okay, remember three-fourths have carrots, so fractions goes right there. What information do I need to know? Okay, so three fourths of the garden are going to have carrots, and the garden will have not uh, the garden will not have more than uh, twelve equal sections right there. Okay, so I'm just reading the problem. So three fourths of the garden is going to have carrots, and it's not going to have more than twelve equal sections. How will I use this information? Okay, well this section is building a table, so I can make a table to find. Uh, we're looking for equivalent fractions right here. Okay, all right, so. Uh, to solve our problem. So here's, uh, we're going to make a table, and I'm going to draw pictures in this table right here. Okay, so um, uh, these are fourth size pieces, and remember, Jame is going to do uh, three of those four. Three fourths of the pieces are going to be filled up with carrots. So here's three fourths of a, uh, uh, um, of, a, of the garden right there. Sorry, tongue twister right there. Okay. All right. And then look, if I just slice this baby right in half right here, now all of a sudden I've divided not four sections. I have eight equal sections and six of them are filled up. So six eighths is also equal to three fourths. Okay. And then I'm going to take this section over here and I'm going to divide it up into thirds just like I did earlier. I'm going to do a slice right there and a slice right there and it's going to make 12 equal sections. And then I have nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine twelfths is also equal to three fourths right there. So there's two other fractions, six eighths and nine twelfths. All right. So uh, what other fractions could represent the part of the garden that will have carrots? Uh, six eighths and nine twelfths. Both six eighths and nine twelfths represent the same area of the garden. Okay, it just depends on how you want to cut it up. All right, let's try another one here. So Keith and Matthew are building platforms for their karate class. Each platform has three rectangles, and two thirds of the rectangles are dark brown. If they are making ten platforms total, how many rectangles do they need? How many rectangles will be dark brown? Okay, so the first one's pretty easy. If they're making 10 platforms total and each one has three rectangles, that's pretty easy right there. All right, so what do I need to find out? Okay, well, I need to find out um, uh, uh, how many uh, rectangles are going to need for 10 platforms. That's pretty easy. That's 10 times 3. And how many rectangles will be dark brown? Okay, remember, two-thirds of them are going to be dark brown. We'll make a table here shortly. So what information do I need to use? Okay, I need to uh, use the fact that each platform has three rectangles, and then two-thirds of those rectangles are going to be dark brown. Okay, and also there's 10 platforms. They're going to, uh, Keith and Matthew are going to be building 10 platforms. How am I going to use this information? I'm going to make a table. Uh, to find the fraction of rectangles that are dark brown 
for the different number of platforms okay so here's my table I know it's kinda of big you guys don't get overwhelmed there's one like this I, I believe in your book okay uh, and then so I did the platforms right here and the number of rectangles per platform remember there's three rectangles in each platform and then two-thirds of them so they're each for every platform there's two rectangles that are dark brown Okay, and I just wrote brown right there just to save some room right there to fit this in the table. And then here, I'm just going to write a fraction, the number of uh, dark brown rectangles over the total number of rectangles. Okay, so the number of rectangles per platform is 3, so I just kept adding 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, 3, I'm just adding 3. So here's 10 times 3. On the 10th uh, platform, they have 30 rectangles. Okay, and then for the number of brown, dark brown rectangles, there's two of them in each one. So I'm going to add two, 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 going across right there. Okay, all right, so there's uh, the number of dark brown rectangles. Okay, and then for here, this is going to be a fraction, the number of dark brown rectangles over the total number of rectangles. So here, this is going to be two over three. This is going to be 4 over 6. It's always the number of dark brown rectangles over the total number of rectangles. 6 over 9. Okay, and then all of those going across right there. Here is uh, on the last one, there's 20 over 30. Okay, so 20 out of the 30 rectangles are going to be dark brown. So now let's solve the problem. Okay, so here it is. I highlighted it. So if they are making 10 platforms total, how many rectangles do they need? Okay, so the number of rectangles is going to be 30 because they're going to make 10 of them. Okay, and then this one says how many will be dark brown? Okay, this is how many is going to be dark brown on that 10th rectangle right there. So 20 of the 30 rectangles will be dark brown, so they're going to make uh, 30 rectangles and 20 of them are going to be dark brown. They're going to have 30 rectangles right here and, all, and 20 of them are going to be dark brown. What's the fraction? 20 out of 30. So this says 20 out of the 30 rectangles are going to be dark brown. Okay? All right, so let's see, what else do I have? Okay, so explain how your answer makes sense. I remember now. Okay, so for one platform, two-thirds means uh, that two of the rectangles out of the three are going to be dark brown. So, so um, here's another way to find it. So 10 platforms, remember 10 over 10 is just equal to 1. So multiplying by 1 won't change the value. So for 10 platforms, two-thirds of them are going to be dark brown. So if I multiply it by 10 over 10, then I get uh, 20 over 30, which means 20 rectangles will de be dark brown out of the 30 rectangles. Okay? All right, let's try one more, you guys. So Mildred is, is making an obstacle course for a field day. At the end of every sixth of the course, there is a bucket. At the end of every third of the course, there is a cone. At the end of every half of the course, there is a hoop. Which spots in the course will people come across more than one obstacle? Okay, well, let's go ahead and make a table to organize this right here, okay? So here's my table right here. So the number of locations on the course right here, all right? And then the first location and then all locations for the bucket, the hoop, and the core, the the and the cone right there, the bucket, the cone, and the hoop. All right, so uh, I'm going to underline all the information and fill in this first column right here, okay? So for the buckets... Uh, every sixth of the course, so that means there's going to be six buckets on the whole course. And for the cones, every third of the course, so that means there's going to be three cones on the whole course. And then for the hoops, every half course, so there's going to be uh, a hoop in the middle and a, and a hoop at the end right there. Okay, so the first location is going to be at the sixth course mark. This is going to be at the third course mark, and this is going to be at the half course mark. Okay, and then all locations. Okay, so for the sixth course, here's all locations. Uh, the first six, the second six, the third six of the course, the fourth six, the fifth six, and finally at the end, the sixth six. Okay, and then for the thirds, it's going to be the one third, two thirds, and three thirds marks. And then for the half, it's just going to be at the one half and two halves marks. Okay, now these, this two over two, this three over three, this six over six is at the end of the course. So that's a place where they're going to have more than one obstacle right there, okay? All right, so uh, identify a relationship using a common denominator, denominator, tongue twister, and find equivalent fractions. Okay, so here we go. All right, so what I want you to recognize, if I take this fraction right here and multiply it by 2 over 2, I get uh, 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, so when I multiply this by 2 over 2, it's going to be an equivalent fraction to um, uh, 2 over 6. Okay, similarly, when I multiply this fraction by 2 over 2, it's going to be an equivalent fraction to this guy right there. 
Okay, now these guys are equivalent fractions because these just all equal one. They're at the end of the course, so they're going to have all three of them there. Remember, the question is, which, uh, which places do they have more than one um, obstacle? Okay, all right, and then there's one more relationship. Can you see it right here? It has something to do with this one right here. If I multiplied this one by not 2 over 2, because that would get me something over 4, and that's not going to match up with anything right there. But if I multiply this guy by 3 over 3, do you see which one it's going gonna, it's gonna to match up with? Okay, it's going to get me 3 over 6. All right, so let's answer the question. So these are equivalent fractions right here. These are equivalent fractions. These are equivalent fractions. And then all three of these guys are equivalent fractions, which means they all have more than one thing at uh, that spot right there. So which spots in the course will people come across more than one obstacle? Okay, they'll come across more than uh, one obstacle at the one-third mark, the one-half mark, the two-thirds marks, and at course at the end of the course mark. All right, you guys. All right. I hope that helps. Take care, you guys.